me to come check his cow. So I went over to the place. And when I first went through town, and you'd be there all day, so I had a big flat enchilada there at the cafe. It's in May, hot day. He had a horse in the pen there, so I got his horse. And, uh, the first pasture he wanted to check was the old homestead pasture. He called it that because years ago a homesteader tried to homestead it, built a cabin. And, uh, and they dug a cistern out by the cabin to collect water. But by now, the, the cabin was gone, but the old cistern was still there. But never never had covered it up or covered it over. It was just a hole out there, about 20 foot deep, rocks in the bottom. And I was riding this horse across the pasture. Whoa. It was hot. The horse went about half asleep, and I was about half asleep. We stumbled off into that cistern. He did a nosedive into it, broke his neck. I, I jumped to the side and landed on my feet, but I broke my feet, but I broke both ankles. Oh, oh no! So, I thought you were going to tell a joke for a minute. I haven't finished the story yet. Oh! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you got to wait for the punchline. <laughs> so, you got him, hook, line, sink. You got him, Glenn. I was in this hole, 20 foot deep. Dead horse. Nobody knew where I was. Hadn't told anybody where I was going that day. Neighbor's gone for two weeks. So. I knew I had to get out by myself. So I thought, well, I'll get my rope and I'll toss it up and snag something up there and try to pull myself out. Well, my feet were broken. I couldn't stand up, so I couldn't get enough momentum on that rope. Of course, it's only 20 foot, 25 foot rope. It wouldn't go. That plan didn't work. So I crawled up over to the wall of that cistern. Stayed there all the rest of the day and all night. Bed horse in there. And finally, the next morning, the sun came up, shone right down on that little horse, and he was starting to float and burgle, you know. And still hadn't figured out how to get out of there. And this went on for about three or four days. By the, by the fifth day, that horse was getting off the rain. Still hot, no cloud in the sky, just the sun beating on that little horse. I'd about given up getting out of there. And I saw some shadows up above. I looked up and there's buzzards circling around. They finally spotted this horse in that hole. They circled, came down in that cistern, and started eating on the horse. And I said, boy, they're going to clean his bones pretty quick, and they're going to be after my bones next. So I finally came up with another plan, my sort of slow thinker. Uh, got my rope again and made six little small area ropes. And I roped six of these buzzards by the hind feet. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> And, there we uh, go. <laughs> then I had three buzzards roped in this left hand and three in the right hand, and I spooked the buzzards, and they went to flapping their wings and flying out of there. So they carried me right with them. And I was so glad to get out of that hole and get fresh air, I forgot to let go of the ropes when we got up to the ground level. So the next thing I know, I'm flying up air about 200 feet with these buzzards. We made a big circle around the pasture, looked over in the distance, and there's town in the distance, so herded these buzzards towards town. We flew to town, made a circle over town, looked down, there's the doctor's office, so let one buzzard go at a time, loaded right down to the doctor's office there. <laughs> he came out and patched me up. <laughs> well, that's a lot better story than what really happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. All in all, the ladder's not too exciting. <laughs> <laughs> You had them now. That would be good. Yeah. No, I didn't. Don't worry, that's the truth. Is that dangerous, Dan? Oh, the dangerous Dan. Hey, there, dangerous Dan. It's good to see you. Where shall I go? I once had a true love and I made her my wife. I swear that I loved her most all of my life. <laughs> The cold of the winter and the wind made her go. She's gone back to Fort Worth. Tell me where shall I go? Where shall I go? Where shall I go? She's gone back to Cowtown. Tell me where shall I go?
you again, Dad. <laughs> oh, is that Creekwood Ranch? Creekwood Ranch. Yeah. Old West Joe and Chuck Wagon Safari. <laughs> Safari. Yeah. Jesse over there. Yeah, Jesse's yeah. behind the base. Yeah, We're gonna yeah. meal some that cattle. Was our theme song, wasn't it? All right, y'all. You know I love get them in the milling. You know, <laughs> and they say, "God damn, let's settle them down here." You know, yeah. <laughs> There's one called Stampede. Keep them to that CD. See. In the cool of the morning, we started in the dawning. The cattle were marching as we started up the trail. The cowboys are grieving, the cattle deceiving as the weather begins to fail. The cowboys are cooing, trying to get the cattle soothing, but the storm is a brewing and the cattle start to rise. In the flash of the lightning, we see the cattle frightened, the fear is heightened by the wind and the hail. Get up, turn it, get A sand animal's fire played on the cattle. The horses are running, the ropes were a humming. The cowboy's life had lost all its charm. Get on the turning, get on the milling. The cattle are willing to do as they should. Get on the turning, get on the milling. The cowboy's pray to. We knew it would be ended when the sun descended and the lightning began. Get on the turning, get on the milling, the cattle unwilling to do as they should. Get on the turning, get on the milling, the cowboys pray to the Lord of the fall. Whenever I, whenever I heard uh, get them to milling, it wasn't in a soft voice like that. He said, get them to milling! Get them to milling! <laughs> I don't want to wake anybody up here. <laughs> I live in uh, Comanche County, Texas, and uh, I grew up in the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia, and people ask me down there, how in the world did you get to Comanche, Texas? So this is the Sad but true song. On some old stranger, home on the ranger, me and my old guitar. Find me a dirt road, lay down this hard load. I'm trailing that old Texas star. I left Virginia, those Blue Ridge Mountains, so many moons ago. Found me a woman with Texas blue eyes, trailing that old Texas star. Comanche County, you're all you should be. Never thought I'd come this far. Lake Proctor's calling, that night skies are falling. I'm trailing that old Texas star. So where is Comanche County? Well, it's not near anything. That's all. That's a I broke down there one day. And you can't even get there from here. I had to spend the night, and uh, my ignition broke in my truck. I was on the way to Lukenbach and then on down to Houston. And uh, it was the next day, and it took most of the day to get my truck fixed. 
But it wasn't that bad. They had a liquor store across the street. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and he made a rope and got six buzzers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know what you're doing. Um, you're the liquor store. <laughs> between Brownwood, Brown County's over here, and Erath with Stephen Mills over here, and Comanches. Oh, and all that. As those of us from Amarillo call that South Texas. And that these <laughs> far south. Oh, north central. Jay Jay south. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's far south. We played in yeah, Bandera they don't last weekend. Though. You know where Bandera is? Oh, yeah. Back to Cotton. Back to Cotton. You know back down in Bandera, Bandera, they call that central Texas? Yeah. Really? Well, they're lost. Yeah, that's what Central I, I just, Texas you know, is Amarillo. We're the what north. we found out when we play different places, and they say we're Central Texas, we say, yeah, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My grandfather. We all have a different. We're attitude. the northern end of the hill country. It really is rolling hills, pecans, uh, cedars, really? live oaks, and if you need a good horse, white oaks. Cross it's timbers. Really pretty. Huh? Cross timbers. Cross timbers. Yeah, just west of cross timbers. Yeah. Have oh, you ever yeah. been to Plainview? Oh yeah. That's the start of South Texas. Yeah. West Texas is Vega. You know, Shamrock is East Texas. I don't know if you know where I'm My, I've been there. My grandpa for thought that anybody that lived here, north of the Red River I'm like Hank Snow. I've been everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just play you know, with Robert Earl King. They closed said Phillips they, School and they merged with Stanett. And, and that's where Red Steagall and I graduated. There you go. And now then they call it West Texas High. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Even though it's uh, kind of up in the pandemic. Well, it's, yeah, well, that's it don't make sense there. to me, but it's I'm just doing it. It's plain where King said is, either a uh, wagon fool fell, fell off or they ran out of ambition. Level land. <laughs> Level land. Level oh. land. <laughs> this is, it's uh, right over there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is a, a new song that I wrote, or, well, recently anyway, but uh, y'all would have, uh, y'all would have enjoyed my uncle's funeral. Uh, he was rather fond of his libations, and they told him it was going to kill him, and he died of cirrhosis of the liver at 78 years old. But they had an open coffin, and I was there, uh, I think I was on the fourth row, and they, uh, everybody goes by and pays their last respect, and these two elderly ladies in cotton dresses and orthopedic shoes, and they have their their pantyhose rolled up in a little ball right above their ankles. Now, I don't know what that fashion statement was all about, but that's the way it used to be or was for still for them. And these two elderly ladies, they locked elbows and they waddled up to my uncle's coffin. And <laughs> they, one lady just almost stuck her head plumb down in there. And she said, my, doesn't he look good? And the other lady said, well, he ought to. He hadn't had a drink in three days. The ghost of Pancho Villa drives the desert with an eye.
I was in uh, a jam session down in Dallas and a guy played the saw and played it well. And I had him do the lead on that and that was the most perfect wow, yeah. instrument for it a would. ghost song. Is how they <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I worked on that a little bit. I think there's some good harp in that. Yeah. <clears throat> I heard your story about the harp did that. Oh, I'm going to sit in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, back after he died, they somebody got his skull. They went and robbed his yeah. you know, grave, oh, yeah. got his skull. Yeah. Yeah. And it, but there's three people that have that. <laughs> <I'm> serious. <laughs> They said, no, no, I've got it. I've that's got six it. of them for a while, and then they narrowed it down to two. The others died. One was a big skull, and one was a smaller skull. So they had they, the committee that was in charge of trying to figure this out went and found one of the old Pancho Villa guys. And they, they didn't come look at him. He had, probably had a lot of te tequila, too. But, and he, had, he studied them both for a while, and he finally came up to the conclusion that the biggest skull was Pancho Villa's. But the smaller skull was Pancho Villa when he was 14 years old. <laughs> <laughs> you got a song with that? Uh, no, I don't. I just talk about Pancho Villa. I just You have Tom Russell's song? Tom Russell? The Pancho Villa. That's insane, too. We ride. Tonight we ride. Oh, oh yeah. Where'd that come from? Yeah. This is one. Uh, I wrote about from west of the Pecos. Okay, you want to see? Yeah, I mean, that's where we start. Thanks for the other West of the Pecos, where the sun always shines. Mountains rise to the sky. Get the sparks like that. Gonna ride up that long trail to my home in the hills. To my home in the hills. I had done that about twenty years. I wandered from home to see the world. Sampled the fruits of the vine, but now I know I'm going to return to go back home. Go back home this time. I awoke one night and I smelled the sage. To me it was so real. I know it was an omen to return to my home in those faraway hills. I see those hazy blue mountains. Picture the grass blowing free. Those tall finning pines this way. I dream at night of those clear dark skies Stars are like emeralds in the night The morning's with the clear quick dawn When the sun starts its climb on high When the sun starts its climb on high I awoke the night and I smelled the sage To me it was so real I know it was an omen to return my home in those faraway hills West of the Pecos where the sun always shines Mountains rise to the sky I'm going to ride up that lonesome trail To my home in the hills on high To my home in the hills on high I awoke one night and I smelled the sage I didn't tell the story before that. But there was, Good, years ago, I was cool. uh, went to an art show out between Carlsbad, around the west of Carlsbad, New Mexico, it was, uh, at Washington Ranch, I think. Anyways, a guy, Stan Perrin, he was here playing tonight. He was playing some songs. Um, he was visiting with a guy that had been in from New York State that had been in the Army and stationed in New Mexico. And uh, he grew accustomed to New Mexico like it when he's living out there. And he got out of the Army, went back to New York State, 
and uh, the boy, he just wasn't, he didn't like it. And uh, one night he woke up and he could smell sage. And there's no sage in New York State, though. Yeah. So he decided that was an omen to move back to New Mexico. Yeah. And he's, he's telling me the story. I said, boy, that's a song there. So that's where that came from. Yeah. Well, I got, I, I got a, a true story I'll tell you. You put, you put it to a song. I was raised in Wyoming. And just out of high school, I decided I wanted to go cowboy for somebody else. I'd already been on my own since I was a sophomore in high school. And I got hired to night cab. You know what that is? It's where you stay up all night and chase cabs. And in Wyoming, it's cold. It's spelled with a K, K-O-L-D. <laughs> and uh, anyway, the guy that I was working for, he had leukemia, and he spent a lot of time in Houston. So his son, who was two years older than me, that made him 20. We had 800 head of calves and 200 heifers to calve out. And they did not believe that, that you did it with, of course, we didn't have much for four-wheelers then. You didn't do it in pickup, you did the horseback. Well, there's 18 and 20-year-old boys will have it. We decided we had to try everything to eat, so we killed about and tried about everything. Well, we knew where this bobcat we had a little hole down here below on a bluff, and that was, we was up in the Badland country, northeast of Douglas. And uh, I come up with this idea. I was riding this Mustang Cross. He's about 14 hands. We called him Mighty because he just, he was mighty. He just never quit. One of them horses really make you mad, but when you wanted a horse under him, you wanted Mighty because he could get her done. Anyway, I said, all right, Bob, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll go over to this edge here and I'll drop my rope down over that hole and you go down the draw and that Bobcat comes out, wave your arms, I'll jerk slack and we'll go. So, you know, I dropped my rope down over that bluff. I'm sitting there and this horse is doing his dance. About that time Bob waved, yanked slack, spurred almighty, and we took off. Well, I'm looking back and this cat is a bouncing and a flying about 20 feet in the air. And I'm tied hard and fast. For you don't know what hard and fast is, that means you ain't letting go. There's no letting go. And that cat, it goes straight up in the air and just go to squall. You know, and every time he squalled, Almighty picked another gear. I didn't have to do no whipping and spur. I look back, and so finally I went and cat go up another 20 feet. You know, no hair standing down there. We see come back to earth, and I look back there, and, and, and the old cat's a dragon. And I said, Phew. So I started trying to shut Almighty down. Well, about the time I got him slowed to a little bit where I could kind of cock my head in the saddle, here come that cat up the road. <laughs> Almighty well, didn't take too kindly of that. I was riding the split range, left range, left. Oh. So I had a right rein and a mad horse and a scared cowboy. And <laughs> ain't scared of nothing. With a with bobcat. <laughs> with a bobcat on the back end. Of him. Oh. <laughs> he flies in the air and every time he flies, that cat holds still pick up the face. We're going down to there. Well, Bob comes up out of the draw at the meantime, kind of at me an angle, and he said, Glenn, cut the damn road! Well, you know, back then, they didn't make these fancy holsters you stuck a knife in, you know. That's what I was thinking. It was deep in the saddle. So here I am on a mad Mustang going 9 0 across sagebrush with a mad cat, and I'm trying to stand there with the glass in the pocket. <laughs> Give me a knife. Well, I finally get my knife out. I whooped that rope. And that cat just blew. Well, by the time he did, Almighty flat come from together. And you ever vision what a yard dart looked like? Flying through the air with the greatest of ease at 18 years old. <laughs> he stuck me like a yard dart in a badger hole. You're doing time to the ground got in your way, huh? Uh, yes. I come up and Almighty is going that way. And I'm looking at the saddle and I was a young cowboy, so I could afford a good saddle. I had $25 tied up in that thing. And a bobcat going there with a rope around his belly at 9-0. And Bob come up and he said, nice loop, cowboy. <laughs> I already got a song for that. I got it. I'm back in the saddle. Out where a friend is a friend. 
Where the longhorn cattle feed on the lowly Jimson weed Back in the saddle again I'm riding the reins once more Toting my old 44 Where you sleep out every night And the only law is right Back in the saddle again Everybody would be die-i-o Rocking to and fro Back in the saddle again Whoopie tie I go my way Back in the saddle again I'm back in the saddle again uh, This is Randy Whipple and Jack there and uh, Randy uh, is one of the driving forces behind the uh, the World Championship Ranch Rodeo there in Amarillo and does, yeah. does a great job for us up there and he runs his wagon around here and being Rio Dosa next month. Mm -hmm. and have great. Sheep. McLaren in America in two weeks. I'll do it. When is it? I've announced a number two of weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. Not your level. I'm not, but I've announced, I announced Stephenville for quite a while oh, yeah. and some other ranch rodeos. That's cool. Well, we got a great foundation, and we're doing wonderful things. We're we're about to surpass giving out five million dollars in support of working cowboys and their families all across America. So, I'm very excited about that. That doesn't include Harvey. Yeah, that does not include Harvey. Yeah, we're gonna we're excited. What a wonderful host! And, uh, oh yeah, we're thankful yeah. to have Randy. Well, I'm just glad you over here. Yeah. Heck. Yeah, I'm all comfy. It's it's been a long hard day. <laughs> first you wagon, look pretty mellow over there. Oh. The first wagon I ever worked on uh, went up to Santa Fe for the first annual New Mexico Classic at the uh, J. W. Eves oh, movie ranch up there that they filmed all those Silverado and all those movies on. They uh, rented that place and. Sold a bunch of tickets, and Michael Martin Murphy was the Sunday headliner, and they played, and a guy out of Fort Worth hired me to work on his wagon. But the thing was, they fed 500 people off that wagon on Saturday. But he knew what he was doing. He had two lines set up, and they had a great big smoker, and they put you know, 60 or 70 briskets in there and cooked them up. And he just had lots of taters and beans and the like. And they had corn that they sold them, but anyway, he said, well, he says, I'm going to hire you, and Washed Up Jerry was up there with me. He says, I'm going to hire you, he says, but I'm going to tell you something about the chuck wagon. He said, the nights are short. <laughs> I had no, had no idea how short a night could be on the wagon. <laughs> they can get really short. That's cool. How about a little harmonica while we're at it? We got a oh, perfect evening. The fancy boot on the bottom of his big guitar. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> big no, just you. Oh, dealer's choice. Let's go there. Hey, do one of my. Is that one of mine? It is my favorite. <clears throat> All right. You was talking about it's been a hard day, long hard day. Uh, I got a song that helped co wrote. Uh, let me see if I can remember how it goes. Uh, sitting on a kitchen shelf back in the wall. It's to the cowboy cookie jar about two feet tall. Had his hat and kerchief and had his boots and gloves. But inside his tummy. He's a cowboy partner to all the little kids. His hat is really made of clay and fits like a lid. Waits all day with a grin just to hear them say, Mom, can I have a cookie? It's been a long day. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta do the work.
they'd smile For they say you are taking the sunshine That has brightened our pathway a while Come and sit by my side ere you leave me Do not hasten to bid me adieu Valley and the wild boy who loves you so true. Cause you pain You are mine forever Run on, on there <laughs> If you don't love me again I've been, been thinking a long time, time, my darling Of the sweet words you never would say now, alas, all my fond hopes have vanished For they say you are going away Come and sit by my side ere I go through In my days to bid me adieu Just remember the Red River Valley Canada. Yeah, because there's some ocean research. stuff. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. I like that. They use cowboy logic. There's reds over there. When they migrated across the river. Uh, I see. That had a red river valley over there. Tom, uh, Bob Campbell and I had this same discussion about 92 sitting in this same grass. I have a good words to it because most of the time I just play the harp. Doesn't, doesn't in one verse he's going off to sea or something or it, it, there's something in there about that was kind of the kicker that went more towards the north. Anyway, I don't care. I take water. Water? Got it? Anything? Y'all good? I'm good. You good? Okay. I met her in old Mexico. She was laughing sad and young in a smoky room. Favorite poets, they all agree. Spanish is the loving tongue. Oh, she never spoke Spanish to me. She was born in Monterey. All the favorite songs were sang. Nobody knew what she grew up to be. The saints and sinners, they all agree. She's the loving tongue Oh, she never spoke Spanish to me Like a lion screaming in the jungle She never fooled what she could see Spoke to all the shadows in her bungalow Oh, she's ever... Uh -huh.
Spanish to me. <gasps> she said, well, if you're from Texas, I want to see them boots. Where's your gun? I've got guns. No one can see. We laughed at that and both agreed. That Spanish is the loving tongue. Oh, she never spoke Spanish to me. So I left her down in Mexico. She was laughing sad and young in a smoky room. The saints and sinners, they all agree. Spanish is the loving tongue. Oh, she never spoke Spanish to me. No, she never spoke Spanish to me. Train song. Anybody got any train songs over there? I was going to do a lion song. Right? Oh. A lion story. <laughs> I couldn't tell they was doing a lion story or a lion story. Well, anyway. <laughs> That's pretty much all I'm yeah, heard so far. I was going to do a boat song. How about a lion, <laughs> lion story? <laughs> <laughs> do your lion and then we'll do a boat. Do the other one play the water there. There you go. Then I have right. a train story. Okay. As you look at me. Uh, well, we need to do it. I had a mountain in the backyard. Yeah. Fade it up. Oh, there you go. Fade it up. I love that. Thank you, sir. I love that. Thank you, sir. 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 Above the mountain, a lion cleaved his yearling bones and licked his fangs and chops. When who should upon the sea a lion just coming down the street? But old High Chin Bob with simple pride and a fabric country. Oh, glory be to me, sissy, with flames and fade and flowers. I ride my top horse here today. I'm the top hand of the lazy jade. I can't catch your owl. That lion cleaned his paw so brown and green and green to build. When a big white loop came circling down and roped him round his mill. He yelled one furry to the world and all the hills yelled back. The top horse started whirling and old Bob picked up the slack. Oh glory be to me since he we hit the glory trail. No one has roped the lion's head and dragged that live that crook, drag that cougar dead. Fly told the tale. Well, away up high in the buggy on that top horse done his best. To whip and crush and rattle and stone from the canyon for the crest. Whatever Bobby turned and hoped, the limp remains to find. Just a red eyed lion, belly roped, that'll help you no know behind. Oh, glory be to me, says he, this glory trail is rough. But I'll keep my dally around the horn until the two to judgment morn. Three sons have rode their circle home beyond the desert rim and turned their star herds loose to roam on the ranges high and dim. Up and down, round and across, Bob found him weak but want. The pride glued him to his heart, and glory spurred him on. Oh, glory be to me, says he, can't be drugged to death. All heroes that I've read about were only fools that toughed it out to the end of Marley Fred. We ever pine a buggy on there late at night. You hear a ruckus, miss the stones, and lift your hair and fright. You'll see a top horse thunder by and a lion loping along. And a rider gawk a channel high, sing forth his glory song. Oh, glory be to me, says he, and to my mighty Zeus. I took a raging dream in tow. Though I never laid him low, I'll never return. Pretty close. Ro wrote your story. Yeah, close. you did. <laughs> Belly wrote. How many of y'all have been on an ocean cruise? We, we do have a Good request night. over here. Now ask us how many of us had fun on it. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> what do they do? We 
Come on. Mother-in-law lives in Desdemona and she's gone blind, so we're actually living with her in Hogtown, at Desdemona. They had a homecoming down there. We played for it, a big fish fry and homecoming. We had over 300 people. The population's only 50. And they did door prizes and uh, one of the door prizes was an all-inclusive uh, John boat cruise on Lake Proctor. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, That's your cruise boat. That was the bait and everything. All inclusive. <laughs> There's a place where the boat leaves from to take away. I'll lay your big problems. You get words, you can got them in the blue ocean. But you gotta get away to where the boat leaves from. I know who loves Zach Brown when I see. Oh, yeah. <laughs> one part sand and one part sea. One part shade of banana tree. Drinks are cold and the reggae is hot. No, oh, this is the place for me. Amen. Get away where the boat leaves from. Take away all of your big problems. You can lose, you can drop them in the blue ocean. But you gotta get away to where the boat leaves from. You see, the problem is if you're down there, there's a perfectly good island somewhere. <laughs> where a ride that floats don't bring your coat. We won't need it where we are going. To get away to where the boat leaves from and take away all of your big problems. You get worries, you can drop them in the blue ocean, but you gotta get away to where the boat leaves from. The sunshine, ten ladies, and pina coladas, Bob Marley songs that are played. There's a sound in my ear, I want you to hear soft tropical songs that are swaying. To get away. Where the boat leaves from, to take away all of your big problems. You get words, you can drop them in the blue ocean, but you gotta get away to where the boat leaves from. Yeah. Woo -hoo. Yeah. 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 Good job. I thought I'd throw a 21st century song there yeah, yeah. to the mix there. You got Jack you dancing on your harp. Yeah, That's Jack good. dancing. Yeah. We have we have yeah. learned that one of the greatest things for any fella and gal is a pontoon boat. Oh, I, got, yeah. I just got one. Yes. He's doing these motorcycles and bought a pontoon boat. It's a good reason. My son lost his leg, got hit by a lady in San Antonio. And he was in the Air Force and lost his leg four months ago. I sold my bike, said I'm getting a the boat. There you go. Well, I woke up this morning. There we go. There we go. Look Woo! up my door. Yeah. yeah. I can tell my milk cow. I can tell my milk cow. Gonna leave you alone 
If you don't think I'm leaving, sweet darling, just count the days I'm gone, cause you're gonna need my loving. I need my love someday. Are you gonna be he sorry? You Treated me this way. Yeah. Milk yeah. <laughs> Can I yeah. interject just one moment? I'm starting to lose light here. I can't hardly see your faces in the cameras anymore. Uh, <laughs> just for the record, can I have each one of you introduce yourself and uh, tell us where you're from, and we'll start here. I'm Dr. Hanson from Amarillo, Texas. <laughs> I'm a doctor of veterinary medicine and a taxidermist, so either way, you'll get your dog back. <laughs> I'm David Waddle. This is a wheelwright. Uh, Glenn Moreland, Port Davis, Texas. Timothy Martin, Comanche, Texas. Glenn Murray, Comanche, Texas. <laughs> 